will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Okay, then you can go ahead and have a seat. And this is a huge witness. This is the defendant's mother, Karen Brophy. The victim's mother, excuse me, Karen Brophy. Victim Daniel Brophy's mother, Karen Brophy. Let's listen. If you want any water. Yeah, I know, I don't want to do that yet. All right. Uh, when you're ready, we're going to have you state your full name and spell it for the record. My name is Karen Brophy, spelled K-A-R-E-N-B-R-O-P-H-Y. All right, you can inquire. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Mrs. Brophy, how do you know Nancy Brophy? How do I know her? Yes. She's your daughter-in-law. She's your daughter-in-law? Yes. Um, she was married to your son? That's right. Uh, which one of your sons was she married to? To Dan. Dan Brophy? Mm-hmm. Do you recall when they got married? No. Okay. It's been quite a while, though. It has. Okay. Um, and do you know if uh, Dan and Nancy ever had any children of their own? No, they didn't. Did the, the home that Dan and Nancy lived in at the time of Dan's death, is that the only home that you knew that they owned? That they owned? Yes. Yes. Okay. And they lived in there for quite some time? Yes. Uh, you know, we're going to have you uh, testify a couple of times, as you know. Um, and so this morning, uh, all I really want to focus on is the morning of June 2nd. Okay, of 2018. On that morning, uh, do you recall um, hearing anything about a problem at the Culinary Institute? The only way I heard about it was uh, a phone call from Nancy. So you didn't see anything on the news or? No. Okay, and nobody else alerted no. you? No. You got a call from Nancy? Right. Do you remember, I know it's been four years, um, almost four years, but do you happen to remember about what time of morning it was that you got that phone call? Well, I've thought about it a lot, but I would say around nine o'clock, but I, I can't be positive. Okay. Um, in looking at uh, phone records of Nancy Brophy, um, it, it maybe looks like she called you about 10, 16 or 10, around 10, 15 in the morning. Does that sound right to you? It, I, it might be. Okay. okay. Do you remember for about how long you spoke with Nancy? Probably not very long, maybe five minutes or a little better. And when she called you, what did she tell you? I think she asked me if I'd had TV on, and I said no. And she said, well, I've just had a call from Max. And there's been, um, I don't remember if she said shooting or trouble at the school. And um, I said to her, well, are you going to go down there? And she said, no, I'm not going to go because there'll just be a lot of policemen there and a lot of cars. I'm not going to go. And I think that was basically the, the phone call. Okay. So you said you asked her if she was going to go down there. And, I did. And mm -hmm. she said no. Yes. Um, sounds like she gave you a reason as to why she didn't really want to go. Did you respond to that or encourage her to I go? I didn't at that point. Okay. Um, and you think that was probably the extent of the phone call? Yes. When you were talking to her during that phone call, um, was she calm? Was she frantic? How did she seem to you? 
just sounded like Nancy, uh, I, I, calm. I don't think she felt, you know, it didn't sound like she was panicky. Okay. So she was clear, articulate? Yes. Mm -hmm. During that phone call, did she happen to say what time she thought Dan had left or whether she thought he would be there? No, I don't think we talked about that. Did she say where she was that morning? I think she said she'd been home in bed. Did she disclose to you that she had actually been downtown that morning? No. Did she say anything about going out and getting coffee and then coming back home? I don't think so. After you talked to Nancy that time, um, what appears to be around 10, quarter after 10 in the morning, what did you do once you got off the phone? I thought about what she'd said. Um, and I don't know if I went out and talked to Jack. Jack was in the yard. And um, came back in and I just thought that she needed to go to the school. So I said, I called her. And I said, Nancy, I think you need to go down there. And she said, well, okay, I will. Again, what was her, her tone like that time? Was she defensive or was she just normal again? Kind of resigned, I, th I think. You know, well, yes, okay, I'll go. I see. And sorry, I don't mean to jump around, but you mentioned the name Jack. Could you tell us who Jack is? Jack is my husband. And is that Dan's father? Dan's father. Um, now, when you said you called Nancy back, she agreed that she probably should go down. Right. Do you recall if you called her cell phone back or if you called a home line or a landline? Uh, I'm going to say the landline. You think you called her landline back? Yeah. Okay. Yes. And uh, do you think that that is the last time you spoke with her that morning? No. You think you spoke with her a third time? Yes. And when do you think that might have been? When? Yes. Well, closer to 11. And uh, in looking at uh, phone records, it appears maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong, that that call might have come in at about a quarter to 11. Does that sound about right? When I called her again? Mm -hmm. For the third time? Yes. Yeah, that sounds about right. And what did she tell you then? Did she tell you where she was? Yes. Or did she, where was she? I said to her, uh, I have to refer back to the second call, I guess. Okay. Um, I had said, well, well, if you find anything out, let me know. So when I called her again, uh, it, I'm going to say it was probably close to an hour. And I, um, I wondered by that time, I thought she should know something if she'd gone down. So um, I said, uh, what's going on? And she said, uh, well, I'm in the, in the car with the police. It was Dan. Did she tell you any more than that? You know, after she said that, I don't remember what, if there was any more conversation. I was absolutely devastated and I'm sorry to keep talking about it um, okay but when, based on the earlier two calls she hadn't told you what she really thought had happened is that correct no not at the time 
So when when you talked to her that third time and she said it was Dan, did you sort of make the the next step in the line of thinking, or did she tell you what that meant? Yeah, when she I said have a matter for the court. Dan, for just a moment. Go ahead and leave the All rise for the jury. I was absolutely devastated. Those were the words of Karen Brophy, Dan Brophy's mother, who's on the stand right now testifying against her daughter-in-law. Those were the words she shared when she was asked how she felt when she learned that it was her son who was shot on that day. You're not gonna miss a moment of her testimony. We'll be right back with more live after this. Nine. Welcome back to Court TV Live, your front row seat to justice. I'm Julie Grant. Thank you for being with us on this Wednesday. You can watch the trial, New Jersey versus Michael Barrison online. Just go to courttv.com. In the meantime, we want to take you back to Portland, Oregon, live. We have on the stand who is perhaps the most critical witness for the state, the mother of the victim in this case. Her name is Karen Brophy. She is the mother of Chef Dan Brophy. We know he was shot and killed kind of unexplainably, at the Oregon Culinary Institute where he worked. His wife is the accused. So this woman on the stand is testifying against her daughter-in-law, Dan's wife, the defendant, Nancy Brophy. You see, everybody's on their feet. The jury was taken out for a few moments. There was a lot of back and forth. There was um, what seemed to be an objection made, even though defense counsel didn't actually use the word objection. She said, Your Honor, we have a matter right, everyone can be before seated. the court, and they approached and did a sidebar. Yeah, Let's watch. Mr. Overstreet, if you could uh, repeat your question. Yes, uh, thank you. Um, so, Mrs. Brophy, uh, I'll actually go back to the last question to then ask you what I had asked you before we took our little break. That was, when you called Miss Bro Nancy Brophy for that third time, you had said that Miss Brophy had told you that it was Dan. Right. Did she say any more during that conversation? Did she say what she thought had happened to, to Dan at that point? If she did, I don't remember. I was pretty distraught at that time. Uh, Mrs. Brophy, do you recall sending an email to my office on June 10th, 2020? No. Okay. <laughs> uh, if I were to show you an email, could you verify that this was an email that you possibly sent? Sure. Just tell me if you recognize that as an email that you sent to my office. Yes. And if you could, uh, please read that second paragraph to yourself, and uh, I'll ask you a question about that. Okay. So after reading that, does that help you remember um, what Ms. Brophy told you during that third phone conversation? Yes. Tell us what it is that you remember about what Miss Brophy told you during that third conversation. That Dan was shot and killed. Did she tell you how she knew that? No. I guess I assumed the police had said, told her that. She didn't elaborate on how she would have known that before she talked to the detectives? No. And uh, even after reviewing this email, do you recall if there was anything else that uh, was said during that conversation? I don't believe so. Okay. And, and once again, what was her tone and, and demeanor like uh, during that conversation?
She said it was Dan. It was a very matter of, matter of fact thing. It was Dan. Was she crying? At least as much as you could tell of her friend. Uh, I, I said, oh, Nancy, and I was crying, and she did cry. After she told you? Okay. Did you say anything else to her? No. That Not that I remember. That was the end of the conversation. Okay. Was that the last time you think you spoke with her that morning, at least? Yes. I have no further questions. Got up, but we do need to take our morning break. So we will be back on the record at just about a little before 5 till 11, but we'll take our, our morning 15 minute break. Okay, we'll go off the record. I'm here now to recess. I'll be there for the weather. Wow, what a huge revelation that was. Did you catch that? What Karen Brophy revealed when Nancy Brophy, her daughter-in-law, tells her that Dan was shot and killed. This is before Nancy Brophy had talked to police. The prosecutor made that point beautifully. I'm sure if we picked up on it, that jury picked up on it. How would she know that if she hadn't talked to police? How would she have that personal knowledge? Let me bring in my fabulous guest now to discuss in the studio with me, the Honorable Kimberly Bando, joining us in Atlanta, Georgia, criminal defense attorney Josh Schiffer. Whoa, was this a moment? Uh, judge, your thoughts, please. It's literally like out of a movie when somebody says, oh, this happened and the body was laying left. Hey, we never revealed the fact that the body was laying left. How did you know that? That's literally what that phone call was to mom. Instead of just saying, I heard that he died, but he was shot and killed, and you haven't even spoken to anyone to know the manner of death? Yeah, that was a huge point, the fact that she knew that information before it was revealed to her by law enforcement. Exactly, Judge. Josh Schiffer, uh, tell me, as somebody who practices criminal defense work day in and day out, you know, these attorneys are sitting there, they're hearing that coming from a witness who is so likable, so sweet, you feel so bad for this woman. How do you refute that? I think you've got to let it settle. Uh, you know, the joke that went through my head as soon as I heard it was, where's the sound effects guy down on the feed? Because that's as gripping as you get. Uh, the state obviously knew or should have known that that was the testimony that was going to come out. And it's dropping the hammer on the defense with something the defense may literally be shocked right now so much that they're sitting down and rewriting their game plan. If that came out of nowhere, that could screw up all of the carefully laid plans for the defense, and this is now a moving target. What a shocking and gripping moment. Suck the air right out of the room. Isn't that the truth? Uh, and, and that's a really great point. I want to expound upon, please, Josh, about if they were unaware of this. Uh, so let's talk, practically speaking. Uh, Judge, let me go to you on this one. Uh, you're also a practicing criminal defense attorney. You've served as a prosecutor uh, previously. With something like this, we know that counsel referenced that email that uh, Karen Brophy had sent to the DA's office, I believe, on June the 10th. We know the incident happened on the 2nd, so we're one week out from the incident, so her memory's fresh at that time. Um, defense counsel, please correct me if I'm wrong, but they would have known about this, right, because the state would have to turn over that email, would they not? Yeah, that would have been a part of discovery. They should have handed that over to them, that, so they would also have that email as well. Right, and I appreciate that. So, Josh, back to you quickly before we hit a break. So. Assuming that this was properly turned over, you would think they'd have to kind of be ready for this, right, and expecting it. Would you if you were defense counsel? Seeing it written down on paper in a case where there could be tens of thousands of documents, a little teeny detail like that, unfortunately, that's what lawyers miss because we don't fully understand unless we put in the work how the state's going to use that infinitesimally small information to upset the entire timeline of the events. If the defense was doing a good job, which Miss Maxfield has an impeccable reputation, if they were doing a good job, then fine, they're ready. But the way that came out, the reactions that I felt, I believe that there was more surprise than anticipated. 
This is so good. I can't wait to keep talking to you both. We have to squeeze in a break. Josh and Kimberly are going to stay with me and want you to do the same. We'll be right back live next.